All right, welcome back. You're still watching Debrick here, and it's time that I want us to have a conversation about uh, the vetting of cabinet nominees. Last week, the Speaker of the National Assembly, that is uh, one Moses Yotangula, told the House that uh, they have until 28th of uh, um, October for the Appointments Committee that is uh, uh, yet to be constituted, uh, unless uh, the members of Parliament here tell me differently. And so they have to report back to the House by 20th of October so that the House can consider the report and con make um, a decision by the 3rd of November, by which time after that then the President can appoint those who have been approved by the House and also uh, make replacements if they are those that will be rejected. But I now I want us to take a look at um, what it will take um, to um, vet them. And let me begin with you, Eric, um, because when you're vetting, which is guided by law, there are many issues that you look at. The suitability for a nominee to hold office. Um, for you, ESCC, what is your interest um, or what you would want to see in this process? Because I know the nominees have to present a certain document from your side, but what more is your responsibility? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, this again uh, goes to the implementation of uh, Chapter 6 of the Constitution, just as it is the case for people who assume office through election. Article 73 of the Constitution requires that uh, persons are selected on the basis of these three attributes. There is suitability, personal integrity, and competence. I know many times people want to focus on the integrity and they forget that we also have the idea of competence and suitability. Mm -hmm. So there are many uh, aspects to uh, be looked at. So it is the expectation of the Commission that uh, institutions or authorities are vested with the power to appoint people. They are guided by the requirements under Chapter 6 of the Constitution. Again, when we are making decisions, Article 10 requires that uh, those decisions uh, uh, are also guided by the national values, including good governance, transparency, and accountability, etc. Mm -hmm. So ESCC, being the body that is uh, mandated to oversee the uh, enforcement of Chapter 6 of the Constitution, is uh, interested in uh, the expected uh, uh, vetting of uh, these uh, nominees. Mm -hmm. uh, the vetting uh, framework is uh, such that uh, we have various uh, stages. For instance, uh, for state officers, who are supposed to be approved by Parliament, we have Parliament with a responsibility in that vetting process. Mm -hmm. And that is why we have uh, the Public Appointments Parliamentary Approval Act. Right. The same is uh, replicated in the county assemblies. We have uh, the Public Appointments County Assemblies Approval Act. Right. So those two pieces of legislation guide how the National Assembly and the county assemblies are to undertake the vetting. Mm -hmm. And what is important here uh, is that uh, under Section 8 of the one for the National Assembly, under Section 7 of the one for county assemblies, there are three key issues that ought to be considered when approval hearings are being undertaken for the purpose of approving those appointments. One, the National Assembly and the county assemblies are supposed to ensure that the procedure that was used to arrive at the nominee is correct. And it is one that is supported by the constitutional provisions. Mm -hmm. Number two, it is to ensure that the nominee meets all the constitutional and the statutory requirements for that position. And at this juncture, I must mention that uh, those requirements include the constitutional requirements under Chapter 6 of the Constitution. I've talked about personal integrity, competence and suitability. Mm -hmm. Then the issue number three that is supposed to be considered during that process is uh, the, we have talked about uh, uh, the procedure that is used to arrive at the nominee. The second one is uh, the statutory requirements. The number three is suitability. And the suitability in this context is with regard to the duties of the office that the person has been nominated to. Right. Is this person suitable? And I wish to add that, again, uh, if we look at uh, the kind of uh, uh, offices to which these people have been nominated to, the question of morality also arises. So suitability should also include mm -hmm. the moral consideration, in our view. So ESC has a role in that, mm -hmm. uh, because Parliament may not have information on the personal integrity of all these people. Uh, the National Assembly has uh, religiously continued to write to ESCC whenever 
they, they have approval hearings for the purpose of getting information on the suitability of these candidates. Right. And I can confirm that last week on Thursday, we received the list of the nominees. The uh, commission is working on uh, the report, and I think today or tomorrow we should be able to revert to the National Assembly. But again, there is uh, an issue that is notable here. Uh, what ESC will do is to give the integrity status of those individuals, but uh, whether Parliament takes that on board, whether they consider that is another story altogether. It's, it's up to those them. recommendations are not binding. Okay. And what is your position as the commission mm -hmm. for positions that do not exactly provide for academic um, minimums, for instance, a CS? Yes. Yet the law talks about um, looking at the academic credentials of a nominee. What then should be the case? Because you've had CSs that it is not clear if they even had the uh, secondary, secondary level uh, certificate. Some, uh, the ideal situation is for Parliament to look at the duties that a certain nominee is going to perform on behalf of the country. And we must acknowledge that uh, a CS is a person uh, whose <laughs> responsibilities impact on the whole nation. Because we are in charge of policy for the whole country in respect to particular matters. Mm -hmm. So the question of suitability is important, even where the law has not uh, prescribed uh, specific academic qualifications, then we can uh, leverage on the suitability requirement to ensure that even the experience that these people have is one that would make them effectively deliver for the country. Okay. And uh, again, uh, nothing stops Parliament to also consider uh, prescribing minimum academic qualification for some positions. We cannot run away from the fact that uh, some positions require people can think. And somebody who were once given a, a paper by some technical team can be able to conceptualize and uh, prob problematize the issues at hand. So that even when you are, are attending uh, you know, conferences out there, when you are speaking on behalf of the government, you must be able to apply intellect. We cannot run away from that. I know some want to say that uh, oh, leadership comes from God. <laughs> okay, we others have no problem with the, the role of God in the appointment process. <laughs> I'm also aware that God is a God of order and, uh, you know, God who also wants things done in uh, a proper and seamless manner, okay. in my view. Okay, you know, it's interesting you say that because just recently, um, is it the High Court that found the law that requires uh, governors to have uh, a degree is unconstitutional because Governors just need to qualify to be MCAs. And MCAs, there's a law that had required them to have a degree by the election of 2022. It was stated to be unconstitutional because it did not involve public participation. And therefore, there's no um, minimum educational qualification. Uh, Diana, for you, as you look at this process, what would be your interest as Amnesty International and also um, as you think about as a Kenyan and what you want to see in cabinet, what must we get right as the legislators next to you um, go to look at these nominees? Okay, um, I think for, for the nominees that have been presented, definitely the leadership and integrity uh, chapter is critical um, at this particular moment. To begin with, in addition to the criteria for them being competent, um, fit for purpose, that, that they are professionals, it must also be seen that in the appointment they will be objective, they will be impartial. Now, so far we've had a, a lot that appointments need to first draw from loyalty. Loyalty does not necessarily come through objectivity. Mm -hmm. It comes through subjectivity, impartiality, alignment, and followership. So that already creates um, a problem. And um, it can be seen in the fact that the cabinet appointments are largely polit politicians who actively campaigned for Kenya Kwanzaa government. I have no problem with politicians. They are amazing leaders. Because if you look at the current cabinet, I think there are a number of governors. So they, they bring the expertise that they've had. They've been leaders in that sense. But how we will make the distinction that they will remain objective and impartial moving forward. 
And uh, if you look at the criteria for, for cabinet, they are also required very, very much to, um, cabinet must have the face of Kenya, mm -hmm. regional and ethnic diversity. Cabinet is also the space that will give um, the president um, the, 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 the push, the needed push to serve all Kenyans, not to rule, to serve all Kenyans. So the appointment must give us and build the confidence that moving forward, the people who've been appointed will serve all Kenyans in all capacities. Mm -hmm. That is what we will be ultimately looking out for. And I think so far we are a bit concerned because um, some of the people who've been appointed um, have known, have reported criminal um, cases that have been ongoing for a long time that have been suddenly uh, withdrawn. So when we come to the process of vetting, there will be no evidence. And we, we are again at the point of con conflict, clash between chapter six on ethical leadership and uh, what we have set out for ourselves as um, everybody is innocent until proven guilty. We lost this in 2013. It is unlikely that we, we will be able to regain. But a civil society will give it a very strong push mm -hmm. because all these criteria we keep <clears throat> saying of leadership and integrity, building trust in institutions, creating professionalism will keep being lost if we are appointing people with questionable credentials, not guilty. Questionable credential becomes the bar. Not that they have been convicted by DCI. It mm -hmm. is that somebody alleged and that so, you so could have defiled somebody. What do you think should that is already happen? very off for public office. Diana, what do you think should happen? Because yes, there are some of the nominees, I think two of them who recently had cases, but now it's not clear for one of them where the position is. The other one has been withdrawn. What should Parliament do when they're considering these nominees? Um, I think Parliament, one, they increased the number of uh, days for vetting from 14 to 28. So we are expecting this August House to be robust in their vetting. They have most of their friends and our former colleagues there. We expect them to question them from how they have carried out their campaigns, how they have managed CDF, how they have related with partners. Everything must show that they will be professionals, they will be objective, they will be impartial, they will be Kenya first. The, the, the government is called Kenya Kwanza. They will be Kenya, they will put Kenya first. Okay. So we expect a um, very, very open uh, process and criteria of what they will be looking out for. We, we would expect this parliament to give us a guided way of public participation that everybody feels I can bring out mm -hmm. the good and the bad of these nominees moving forward because we also need to bring out the good okay. of these nominees. That way Kenyans know um, that you have appointed Diana. Diana, Diana believes in, in not stealing. You get that, that way right. people will know my credentials before. Okay. My bad will also be questioned and that some names mm -hmm. can be dropped if they do not comply with what is um, required in both the Public uh, Appointment Approval Act, the Leadership and Integrity Act, and the Constitution. We, right. we, we hope, I am hoping some few names can be questioned and okay. raise the bar. I, I, I hear you, and I have two legislators here. I don't know whether any of you has been um, nominated or selected to the Appointments Committee, any? We don't know yet. Oh, you don't know yet. Okay, all right. So let me begin with Honorable Elachi. Um, you've been in Parliament. You were in Parliament in 2013, 2017, even though you are a senator. Uh, but as you receive these nominees, whether it's at the vetting committee or it's at the plenary where you will be considering uh, the list of names, people feel like because already now Kenya Kwanzaa has been uh, declared the majority in parliament, then it's, it, it's going to be an easy ride for these nominees of Pre President William Ruto. But then what must parliament do, the house that is seated, to ensure that those questions Kenyans have, the law 
is implemented in looking at the suitability of all these nominees and those that have questionable character that is highlighted whether they pass or not. You see, first of all, uh, as you say, <laughs> when I look at how now we ended up in the issue of majority and minority, definitely, let's not question about how they are going to pass. You know, it's good to tell Kenyans and not to play around it. Because Kenya Kwanzaa, which for me, uh, my speaker with his wisdom, uh, if he was able to usurp the powers of political parties <laughs> and, the, and, and, and the judiciary, then uh, we just move on because in, in, in real you, you, good you, governance... You think he usurped the powers yes, of political did. parties? Yes, he did. My speaker did. I respect my speaker and we can't question it. That the good thing with speaker, you know you can't question him on the floor of the house, it's finished. But indeed, yes. In good governance, the best my speaker would have done Uda is the largest party in parliament. ODM is the minority party in parliament. You have a very clear standing orders so that you make this parliament to look, I mean, that we respect the rule of law and everything. But to now go and take parties that had gone to court very early and Justice Sergon had spoken on it so well mm -hmm. that indeed the parties must go back to their coalitions to deal with their internal mechanisms. And it was a judgment, ruled. I thought even uh, they will help the speaker to get that judgment so that he just comes and use our standing order too and just, I mean, to just say, this is the largest party, this is a minority, and we move. And, and it would have been neat for parliament. But having said that, so now we come to our nominees. Mm -hmm. Indeed, I've said this is a government within a government that, and now a government. 2013, we brought in my brother from Mumias. We didn't question papers, so why do we want to change now? 2017. That, uh, I mean, uh, yes, 2017. Mm -hmm. So why do we want to change now? We can't. We will be lying to Kenyans that we are going to set bars where there is no bar. What I want to question now, those who are being uh, nominated, if indeed... You look at yourself and you believe that consciously within me, chapter six is questioning me. There are many ways what to do. And then Kenyans will start saying, Unaogopa, Sijini. There's no kuogopa when you resign. It is what you have done with dignity. Yeah. Or when you say, I, I appreciate this, but I know. Let me leave it because I have my issues going on. But I know none will do that. Having said that, all I have said, since they have brought in the men who are also questionable, no woman is going to be questioned. I want to be very clear here. <laughs> yes, I want to be very clear because you will find the men, and I'm saying this in a very honest way, the men will round up and ensure they protect their men. So now women, we are the ones who are going to now start questioning our women. No, 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 no. But the thing they have to remember mm -hmm is that the ministry you have been given, you are going to meet different people, different caliber, and of high, very high standard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the best you can do, always have a good technical team that guides you on the process. And therefore, the PSS that we want to see should not be politicians. The PSS we want to see now being nominees who are going to work in these ministries must be people who have worked in government, who understand government, and who are able to understand this politician the way we used to do those days when politicians, ministers came from parliament. How do we ensure we guide them and protect their lines of how they are doing things, but more importantly, have a good, good way that even when you go out to represent the president, you're very clear, you are representing Kenya at that time. So I don't want to tell Kenyans on a Monday that we shall look it's and, ah, no, 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 it will be a story of lies. So Kenyans, we agreed, we are working with hustlers. As you said, hustlers are people who have worked very hard. And so if the hustlers don't have papers, we will make them go through. If the hustlers, the government feel that these cases they have is, because by the time you're bringing the name honestly, by the time you're naming this person, knowing very well, why would I go and do the dirt? The, the, then, you, then, you know that is one thing I've always then, asked Honorable Yes. Of course, 
it is not there is uh, i mean the work of parliament to fail people or to no. block the appointment yeah but when you say because the, because the nomination has been made the men will stand with the men then what is the role of parliament no it? no no but it is not also the role of parliament to come and bring a name knowing very well it is a name that is questionable is it the role of parliament for us to be doing that dirty work and it is us now who know no 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 by the time the names were coming they knew all these names have issues you know most of them and so i don't think it's the role of parliament to do that i have said and i want to repeat you are, you, if you are respecting the constitution, Sam, then everybody has a right of fair administration, <laughs> justice, <laughs> and you'll be told that. Kenyans have always said you are proven guilty eh? uh, until you are proven guilty. Okay. Yeah, so, you so, are innocent so, 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 what until... I'm what I want to get from you is because Parliament has been given that responsibility by the constitution. Exactly. And your party now, based on the speaker's ruling, is in the minority. Yeah. So you'll just be... You, you Voting see, with the majority? we are not going to go in a committee, then do clean work in a committee. Then when you come on the floor of the house, it is trashed all of it, surely. I mean, I have said this 13th parliament, we must be honest to Kenyans. You see, if we go into the committee, or whoever will be in the committee, and they say, all of them, they have agreed that indeed these names we are removing. When it comes to the floor of the house, then we have a right to debate on each name and say why this is being removed, this. But if you go in a committee, Sam, and you come to the floor of the house, the same way, that I've told you, the same beginnings we started with my speaker. Mm -hmm. It's the same way, because the report is brought on the floor of the house with all the names, isn't it? And whoever will table it, tables. The chair of the appointment committee, tables. If that report has nothing, even if you come and question, it will pass, Sam. Um, then why, what will we be telling Kenyans? Okay. That we tried in the parliament, again, no, 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 no. Okay, all right. I think the best I, is I to tell Kenyans, Hachi. and uh, Kenyans are the ones who voted in this government. So, we are telling them. But Kenyans you, also voted members of parliament. Exactly, but oversight. they again gave us the majority of the same hustlers. We should not run away from that. Yeah? Which you're contesting so, anyway. But, uh, which uh, I'm contesting, but, let, let but then from, at uh, the same time, yes. I'm saying this. I don't want to be part of a process that I already know. This is a wrong process, Sam. And then we remain again and people start saying, oh, this one. No, 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 no. Okay. I want to tell Kenyans, mm. we've accepted, we have moved on. You see, also the judiciary should help us. You can't have a case of someone for five years, six years. A case that was very clear. And this is where we, if I'm asked as parliament, now we need to go back on how Europe does its judiciary system. That you have a jury that sits and guides you properly. So that when even the judge feels he will do this, this jury has already decided that he, I, I hear you are guilty. I hear, but that sounds like very fundamental shift from how we carry out our justice system. But Honorable Koech. Um, no, no, it's not a fun. I'm just saying it's no, the I'll, best. I'll come back to you. The I'll best. come back to you. Honorable Koech, I mean, so what will, because there's already that feeling that you're in the majority that um, you can hear. Mushimu Ailachi here saying that uh, the names will pass anyway. But there is a responsibility that parliamentarians have. How will you do it? Absolutely. First, let me say, um, I think you, we are picking uh, the story of integrity from one or two cases, forgetting that largely this cabinet is composed of extremely, extremely brilliant people. Murkomen, for instance, is part of the people who, who, who did uh, participate in uh, doing the Constitution 2010 that we have today drafting of that constitution. We have Professor Kindiki, a brilliant uh, seasoned uh, lawyer. We have Soipantuya, a lady of substance who's worked in the international uh, co community. We have so many names here that uh, Duale, I mean, he's been in parliament for, for very long. We, we have professionals in this, in this cabinet, uh, safe from being politicians. Guys who have uh, huge, huge integrity uh, Aisha Juma, for instance, is uh, rising from a councillor to be a cabinet secretary. That is no mean feat. Uh, I can tell you that for sure. Uh, so we have people, so Monica Juma, I've worked with her uh, in defense committee in last parliament, an exceptional woman uh, who's done very well. <coughs> Moses Kuria, brilliant economist. I mean, you have huge names here. Alice Wahome, uh, very, very competent 
woman uh, yeah. who are amazing there, uh, Babu Namwamba. <laughs> That's a <laughs> great <laughs> name. <laughs> so in fact, names. Uh, in fact, Eliud Owalo was one no, of no, the okay. biggest <laughs> strategists of <laughs> Raila Moe the, the viewers can see the names and the images from home. <laughs> yes. just, tell me, <laughs> just tell me, how will you execute your duty at a time that there's already that perception that because you're in the majority, it's just a walkover? No, 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 no. Just because we're in the majority does not mean that we bully our way out of, mm -hmm. of, of situation. We must interrogate every name that comes there. It is the responsibility of Kenyans to know that what they have out there are people of substance. Like uh, Eric did say, you want to go out there and uh, uh, when we are articulating a government position, you, it must be demonstrated, even in our own speech, that uh, we have someone. We don't want someone going for some UN uh, General Assembly conference and even communication alone is a problem. That is a no. We must have the face of Kenya. Mm. People are educated in this country. There are so many people out there who will have wanted to be in the cabinet, but they do not have that opportunity. There are so many hustlers out there, brilliant people who can articulate our position, and they are hustlers. So people must be interrogated. If you cannot meet that threshold, then it's, there's no point of being in the cabinet. If you then, even by making recommendation, without necessarily, if you feel that, uh, uh, if the other side feels like they, are not, they don't have enough numbers to even shoot down some of those names, then it is important that, uh, that they, they make their position known. You know, they, 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 what do they say in English? That uh, the minority will have their say, but the majority will have, have their way. way. Mm -hmm. So that is important to look at. But I mean, looking at the cabinet of uh, uh, the, uh, President William Ruto, I find in my own capacity, no fault. I've worked with many of these people uh, before in, in, in the last parliament and even uh, during our campaigns, and I largely see no most of them. Okay. They're extremely uh, competent people that I find no fault. And let me tell you one thing, uh, Sam. Mm -hmm. There is a belief that uh, people seem to have out there. There is no way in the Constitution that says, that says a politician should not, be, should not be in the cabinet. In fact, in the US uh, today, nine out of 15 uh, and in Biden's cabinet are former uh, politicians. Actually, two uh, current governors and two uh, current Congress women. Mm -hmm. So it is, we, we, and, and the obsession of, of, of education in, in Kenya also is something that really offends me. I don't know why we are always obsessed about education, education. For as long as you can be articulate, you have the wisdom. But, but do it you is think, enough. Let me tell you. Hold on, yes. I mean, you still have the mic. Do you think education has any role in making you a better leader? It does. I mean, it, 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 but there is also exposure. There is experience. Uh, last parliament, I mean, even BBI, where I largely did uh, participate in, was largely a product of uh, Moshimo Leshomo. Lejomo is, 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 is hardly uh, uh, educated, but an, an exceptional woman. I mean, today, if, if, if a chance was to be given on anything to do with gender, I will go for- What did you just say? I will go for Honorable Lejomo. She came out and, and she will, even in parliament, she will, she will speak in Kiswahili, but very articulately so. So it's not so much about education. It's just an obsession, but many times, experience and wisdom comes in. You know, there's, there's a difference to be educated and well-mannered. How many people are educated that are even poor? <laughs> <laughs> How many people are educated, and when they speak, you wonder if they even went to school? It is, it is there is well, uh, so many different uh, things that you must look at. Uh, so, uh, uh, Elachi, there's something you want to say, because I want to go to uh, a quote from the law. W yeah. What is it? No, no, I just want to say, while, while I agree or disagree, mm -hmm. you see, Honorable Mama Leshomo is learned. Yes. She learned during her time in a very different way. That is why in her dedication and passionate, she will come out and you'll find. But that does not mean now we disregard everything. Mm -hmm. That is her and her dedication. Okay. Yes, I want to agree we have Kenyans. I have seen even uh, Exceptional ones. A, a few governors really complaining that you come with a lot of papers and yes. when they start their interviews, you're very disappointed. Mm -hmm. We need to now, even as a country, ask ourselves that question. Fine, experience is important. But at the same time now, uh, and I want to thank Mwishmua uh, Koet, you see what Leshomo said in the parliament, they have just done it. 
what BBI was saying is that politicians now come back and become CSS. Exactly. So what they are trying to do is to implement also BBI from a side. And there are many things <laughs> oh, they okay, have okay. picked. Let, let, let so it was at, not um, a bad document. It was only the politics that were bad. Uh, public appointments. There. Uh, just hold on. Uh, okay. uh, public appointments, Parliamentary Approval Act, Section 6, Subsection 9. Any person may, prior to the approval hearing and by written statement on oath, provide a clerk with evidence contesting the suitability of a candidate to hold office to which the candidate has been nominated. Um, and of course, uh, a candidate may at any time by notice in writing addressed to the clerk withdraw from the approval process yeah. and the candidate's nomination shall thereupon lapse. I think that's what uh, Honorable Elachi was talking about. But in terms of uh, th these written statements, uh, Honorable Koech, um, because you sit in parliament, I don't. Um, what will you do with that information? Because I've heard people say that uh, Innocent till proven guilt, of course, that's the principle in law. But what should that content, if it's overwhelming, what should it mean uh, for the vetting panel and the, and the House? You, you must realize that uh, as a committee in parliament, we are not, we are not judges. You know, we, we listen, we, we collect information from people out there. That will form the basis of our, uh, uh, of our, of our, of our, of our decision. Mm -hmm. As, uh, as, as, as a committee, uh, for instance, if it is in the case of uh, cabinet secretaries, the committee on uh, appointments. So that generally does not mean that uh, we will largely dwell on, on what is given on petitions, but it will inform what the committee and the report should reflect. So that if, for instance, uh, a team will want to disagree, they will now attach and annex the said uh, petitions mm -hmm. in regards to support uh, their, their, their position. So I think it is only fair, and, and many Kenyans out there have come out with very strong uh, statements. You, I'll tell you, for Judicial Service uh, Commission, was it Judicial Service Commission? There's an officer who had, uh, who had issues with uh, had a case on wife, wife battering, and the case was ex alive in court, and it was unbeknown to many in the committee. Mm -hmm. And uh, such cases, of course, when they come to the light, even without necessarily sharing them, is extremely uh, uh, pointer of what kind of a person you have and okay. temperament and many other things. Um, so there are people who have disregarded uh, court orders and, and uh, they find themselves in, in, the, in the cabinet. So we have a problem. I'm seeing today C.S. Musheru mm -hmm. is on the headline for disregarding a court order. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's a cabinet secretary who should be should be in jail. These are things that we will not entertain. <laughs> we, want, we want an administration that is a strictler to the rule of law. We want an administration that speaks and walks the talk. That is what we want. So that people yet, don't hold, uh, don't yet, look. Yet if such a person was to present themselves, the principle of innocent till proven guilty will still apply. No, but you see, contempt, contempt of court means that you've really defied the court. Mm. By Muguna, by the way, by Muguna be still being in Canada, Matiangi should be in jail. No, no, I'm, huh? I'm talking about if a person came. It's a contempt of court. And they have been cited for contempt of court, but still in court, not yet proven. Mm -hmm they will still pass because innocent and proven guilty. But then th that is now even a point to put them to task, uh, you know, to explain. That, by the way, is a shortcoming. If I was to do, if I was doing, uh, if I was to read from uh, uh, one to 10, mm -hmm. then of course now you find, of course, you're now minus one okay. from, from such a mistake. O all right. But, but Sam, yes. um, lo look at um, the leadership and integrity chapter. It's very removed from the principle of innocent until proven guilty. And let me just read Article 73. Mm -hmm. Authority assigned to a state officer is a public trust to be exercised in a manner that is consistent with the objects of the Constitution, demonstrates respect for the people, brings honor to the nation and dignity to the office, and promotes public office in the integrity of the office. And then finally vests in the state officer the responsibility to serve the people rather than the power to rule them. So it is very different mm -hmm. when you move to leadership and integrity. And that is why um, um, both Honorable Koech and Honorable Elachi are saying, if you question whether you're bringing honor to this office, you must step aside, okay? It is, it is very, very removed from the threshold of criminal responsibility. Leadership and integrity does not call for criminal responsibility. What if you don't? Your conscience doesn't speak to you to step aside. When it does not, that is where our institutions come in. It is where the people in the interrogating who is coming before them. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm sure it will not be just civil society. It will be the business community. It will be hustlers at different levels. Mm. If their vision, th that confidence is not there, those people must be removed. Okay. And we cannot keep relying on the fact that we have failed before. Okay? okay. If we have failed before, we always have an opportunity to improve ourselves and attain what we have set ourselves for ourselves as standards of leadership and integrity. Eric, yeah. over 9,000 uh -huh. Kenyans, yes. she prefers to call them hustlers, okay. applied to be principal secretaries. Yes. The vacancies available are just between 49 and 50. Yes. So the Public Service Commission uh, shortlisted 477. Yes. Then long listed, quote unquote, to 585. Yes. When you look at um, those shortlisted, some of them are politicians, um, former politicians, uh, former candidates in the just concluded elections. Mm -hmm. What then should the Public Service Commission be looking at? I know it's a commission just like your commission, mm -hmm. but when you're looking at the competencies and the qualifications, mm -hmm. Where do you draw the line? Because a principal secretary is the accounting officer, mm -hmm. uh, does much of the executive work in a ministry. Where do you draw the line? Yeah, allow me to quickly uh, add on to something that Elachi said, then I come to that. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to encourage Mwishmiwa not to give up because uh, from uh, the way she, she spoke, <laughs> it's like now there's no hope for Chapter 6, but I want to say that there is a lot of hope in Chapter 6 of the Constitution. <laughs> so let's agree that uh, Parliament should not be a conveyor belt when uh, they are uh, processing those names. Uh, so far, Parliament has done well on what I will call uh, the procedural compliance, ensuring that uh, you know these people are invited, they observe the timelines, but there's a lot of room for improvement in respect to substantive compliance. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage uh, Parliament and uh, LH to uh, uh, just ensure that they interrogate those names, consider the input that comes from uh, public participation, mm -hmm. so that at the end of the day, then they give one inch what is expected. Because again, it is a responsibility of parliament to do so. Now, coming to what uh, you have asked, uh, the Public Service Commission is required um, to present to the president a pool of names. So our understanding is that uh, out of the 9,000 Kenyans, PSC has been able to consider all the relevant factors in coming up with uh, the ones who have been shortlisted. We know that is just a first step. There is more to be done in uh, the appointment process. Mm -hmm. After that, those people will still be taken to parliament. So I think the appointment process is long, and that is why if the National Assembly can do its work effectively, at the end of the day, we will have accounting officers who will even not uh, preside over corruption. Because of late, we have seen uh, very many people in ministries looting, not stealing, looting billions and millions. Then you ask yourself, where is the accounting officer at that time? So these are key uh, issues to consider, in addition to competence and the suitability, the integrity. So it is uh, our hope that from the names that have been shortlisted, we will, at the end of the day, have men and women who will also mm -hmm. participate in the fight by not presiding over graft. Because the accounting officer is in charge of the resources, and under the Public uh, Finance Management Act, these people have a responsibility to ensure that public money is not stolen. <laughs> and uh, something else related to that is that um, if we fight corruption effectively, Sam and uh, colleagues, the benefits are massive. Recently, uh, I do not want to talk about the hustlers, but I've got an appointment to talk about them. The president launched an affordable housing project in Mukuru. I think it's around 53 acres of land that he has recovered from grabbers. So that tells us that having recovered that five billion worth piece of land, which is now going to change the lives of Kenyans, if we can strengthen institutions, ESEC, judiciary, and others, this country has enough money, by the way, to deal with the problems that we are talking about. This country has enough resources to even uh, revive the economy in the manner uh, Honorable Coach has talked about. Mm -hmm. So fighting corruption begins with having the right people in office because these are the people to make decisions okay. that impact on how resources will be utilized. Mm -hmm. And um, Honorable Elachi, you recently served at the Public Service um, Ministry uh, as a Chief Administrative Secretary. 
And I've seen quite a number of uh, politicians who've been shortlisted. Some of them are former MPs, some of them lost elections as, uh, as governors. What makes a good PS from your experience and what is the possibility that a politician uh, would make a good PS? You see, uh, I'll, be a, uh, I'll be a bit biased, not as a politician. I, uh, that's why I said I will look at the CSS and understand why the president would wish to have such a team is so that you do not end up in, a stra uh, in, 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 in the same uh, fates that made uh, Kenyans not to understand. So what is the role of this CS? Why would you come into our... All this. I think that is what he was trying. But in terms of vetting PSS, I would be very strict. I, I, and I will question, by the way. I'll be one of those members of parliament who will really question every PS who is going to be a PS. Mm. Why? First of all, in good governance, PSS was supposed to be part of the civil servants. That, that is the highest a civil servant can go. You see, when we remove it, it, it already brings that conflict. They feel a politician has come and maybe I would have moved at this level because I have worked for years, like 10, 20, 30, to, to, to be in government and moving slowly, knowing very well I would be a PS at one point. Mm -hmm. That was the best way of how government used to function. And so for me, the best PS is a PS who has worked with government who is, even those who are in government, if you feel you don't want them, then you can use within what you have been given. We are pleading, try and bring a team that has worked with government because they will understand process. They will understand how government works. You'll be able now to link from your CS mm -hmm. to the lowest person who is maybe the gatekeeper within your ministry to understand. I'll tell you this. What made me feel, feel very disappointed in the CSS that we had, that they never, most of them, I don't want to say all, but for us, PS, uh, CS Cobia gave us an opportunity to understand public service. And she gave you a role. Some of the other CSS could not even give, and therefore, you find within a department, you have two PSs. Now, if one is a government, for example, now where we are headed, mm -hmm. you can imagine if you bring in a politician and the other department has a PS who has been in that structure. This is the most knowledgeable person who understands this ministry. You will always find yourself, and your juniors will be wondering, you are leading us, and we are supposed now to, 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 to be giving you every policy that we have to do and how it is done. And by the way, I want to plead to all of them, especially even the CSS, can they go to government, uh, to the government school mm -hmm. and do a thorough program of two weeks? It's very intense, yes, very tough. It needs commitment. But I'm telling you, when you walk out of there, you will understand how government works. Mm -hmm. So for me, in this government, I am pleading with them to not bring us politician PSS. You have given us CSS who are politician, now give us government officials who have worked in government, who understand government, and who will understand how to work with all the directors, and they will be able to guide their CSS. Because if you bring two politicians, trust me, they will be in conflict. The PS and the CS will be in conflict. Mm -hmm. And also we need to look at, and I'm hoping, they are looking at some of the policies uh, that were a bit changed that are not so good that can bring conflict also. Because the PS is the accounting officer. You as a CS can uh, walk free because you'll say, I don't sign this, I don't do this. But the PS is the accounting officer of the ministry. Okay. okay. Yes. Uh, during your campaigns, part of your uh, disappointment with the exiting government was that uh, certain principal secretaries or CSs were taking part in active politics. Uh, and so when you have some of um, the politicians, especially that lost while running on tickets of parties within the Kenya Kwanzaa, 
you know, already that, that puts Kenyans thinking. Mm. Are they being shortlisted because they are politicians or because of their competencies? But how then must the president and his deputy work around uh, the matrix of those people that you appoint as PSCs to ensure that you have a professional civil service, a professional leadership of uh, the ministerial departments, but also not interfere with politics because politicians will always be politicians. I agree. This is where I, I agree with Honorable Alaji. We should not have any politician as a permanent secretary. That's a very critical office, unless we, uh, we, we now want to just politicize the entire structure of the executive. Mm -hmm. It is important that since we've uh, most, almost 90% of the cabinet is composed of politicians, let us have professionals as uh, permanent secretaries. I've seen many who have come out to apply for the same position. In fact, by the way, we should go further and say, if you've served before as a permanent secretary, I've seen several names of uh, previous uh, permanent secretaries still applying. You cannot be a career permanent secretary. <laughs> you must be able to give opportunity for other people also to demonstrate. But they are civil servants. Mm. I know, but you cannot be a career. Pa 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 pa. It's actually a privilege to serve. If you can serve one time as a permanent secretary, just like all of us have a tenure, I mean, governors have uh, uh, terms of uh, tenure in office. It should also be the same with the permanent secretary, so that you are in a ministry or in an organization for a short period, and then you exit and give room for other people also to grow uh, professionally. So I agree with Elachi, we need to have non-politicians as, as, as permanent secretaries. These are very key people. Why I was insisting on cabinet secretaries being uh, majorly from the political class is because mm -hmm. most of them, like, uh, uh, like Diana did say, most of them actually understand the hustler, uh, our plan as, as Kenya Kwanzaa. Most of them campaigned. Uh, we were out there campaigning. They understand. They interact with people. These are the people now. Most of these guys who always sit in offices in Nairobi do not understand the feeling mm -hmm. of the people of Dagoretti <laughs> or Belgut, for instance. We need people who are in touch with the ground. Most of, uh, did you, did, by the way, uh, Sam, did you realize that a few of the cabinet secretaries who went to attempt uh, politics mm -hmm. all flopped? Just because of one thing, they, they, didn't, they don't understand the trade. They don't understand how to interact with people. They don't understand how to communicate uh, public policies. Mm -hmm. So that is now why you need a, a politician as a CS, but as a, pr a principal uh, secretary, you will need a non-political. Interesting. I want us to take a look at the feedback that has been coming to us via Twitter, Citizen TV Kenya, at Sam Gituku. The hashtag to use is Debrek. If you have time, I'll allow the panelists um, half a minute to give us uh, what they think. But uh, for you, Diana, as we move now to the next level of the principal secretaries, I don't know that you, did you apply? Um, no, I think I, 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 I missed the deadline <laughs> by a few seconds. Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, but, but, but what is your thinking about that? How should that be taken at a time that the Public Service Commission has a role? Of course, there are many Kenyans, 9,000 that applied. They have not been shortlisted. Um, what assurance do we have that this is the best of the best in terms of all, all possibilities of looking at uh, the competencies and suitability? Um, I think the, the, in, in recent time there has been a push uh, for the public service to be disclosing the modalities for why we reduced from 5,000 to 400 or now to 581 in the long list, short list. <laughs> um, that then would help to build confidence um, moving forward. I do agree that principal secretaries need to be the best professionals in um, the ministries that they are going to lead. So, but the other thing to add is cabinet, the president didn't do too well in terms of including the youth, the principal secretary, whereas it's an area for career civil servants who have had very long service, they are a few youth who can excel in certain uh, ministry. And this would also be a place for nurturing that leadership and giving the opportunity to the youth to be included. So um, the principal secretary, I am encouraged that parliament here, they have all indicated they will be fully seized of this particular uh, process. And um, it's to call upon Kenyans 
to just engage with the lists that has been shared of shortlisted uh, principal secretaries. We give our input. And I think, I don't know how we'll engage with civil servants because sometimes they can give us the best insights for what is needed in a certain um, department or agency within a ministry. Mm -hmm. Because principal secretaries do not lead the entire ministry. Some of them have a number. And um, say the Ministry of Interior, that in the last, which in the last 10 years underwent several reforms. Those civil servants, that's the one area I hope they can give us insights. Okay. Because some of the things we are not very clear, when you're engaging with a ministry, for those of us who do advocacy and lobbying, you can be very lost. But if those civil servants give you insight, they mean very, very well. Okay. And this is the one area where you're sure then, uh, once the, civil, the cabinet secretary carry the vision of the, pre, the, the current government, the principal secretary also bring continuity of government. Mm -hmm. We do not want very serious disruption okay. in what the government of Kenya has been uh, now that there is a change of power. The Kenyan government from 1963 is one, and uh, these civil servants allow for that continuity. All right. It is one of the reasons that we have had the stability that we have enjoyed as a country. All right, let's take a look at that feedback that I've been sharing with us. Um, at Citizen TV Kenya, Sam Gituku, the hashtag to use is dead break. I'm waiting for it to load so I can have a read. This is Bobo Tino, you know, you're saying that um, bilateral talks by President Ruto among East Africa region is a great move to resolve impending issues, especially Tanzania. It will help grow our economy regionally. Um, Riles, how, how do you read your name? If William Ruto looming pay cut for MPs and entertainment and travel succeeds, that will be a big plus. Otherwise, now these are just vibes. Well, I'm not sure there's a, a real indication of where that money will be cut from. But anyway, it's Rev Harrison, you're saying, to me, I see the shuttle, shuttle diplomacy will be of great help. Thus, it's a turnaround on our East African economic freedom. Moreover, CS nominees be vetted as soon as possible to guarantee smooth running of government. Uh, Gordi Barasa Were, you're saying, Kenyans should be patient with Ruto's administration. He has been in office for less than a month, and we can all see his commitment to effect change. We should appreciate the fact that running a government is inter one man affair. All right. Bane Morris, Hasla in government means those critical government decisions are directed from and for hustlers, like the Fuliza issue was a government move by hustlers in business. Hustler is anyone working hard for a living. All right, lots of definitions. Um, what else do we have? Again, Bobo Tieno, President Ruto has started his leadership in the right direction, more so putting some measures to lower the cost of living and reaffirming bilateral relationship with foreign regional countries, or you mean countries in the region. All right. Um, Okay, Lomalimu, Kenyans aren't so much interested on wrangles between Azimio and Kenya Kwanza. Our major concern is how the biting hunger can be averted. MPs must look for modalities of reducing the cost of living through bipartisanship, just the same way they normally do when raising their salaries. Whoa. Okay. Again, Rev. Harrison, you're saying, today's debate is well organized, and I see today Honorable Beatriz Alachi's mind is completely different and independent today. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I was just wondering, <coughs> Honorable Coach and Honorable Alachi, you speak so eloquently about um, politicians should not be PSs. What if, what if the appointing authority presents to you a name of... A former MP or someone who just lost a, 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 an elective seat recently, what will you do? What will be exceptional of that of that of that person? Yeah, I mean, it's. I'm sure the president also is aware, fully aware, why he needs not to politicize also his entire uh, executive, mm -hmm. and it is important. I, I don't think he's a man working in isolation. He, he's probably even watching this show, and it is important that we mention in every forum that we get. Mm -hmm. that uh, it's a now enough of uh, politicians. I've even seen on our today uh, cartoon in one of the dailies, uh, uh, PSC, uh, what is it called? Pa Public, Public, Public Service, Service Commission. Commission. Mm -hmm. It's a body, by the way, that, is, uh, that shall, uh, shall have a lot of spotlight on because you realize that that list had uh, a lot of manipulation. If you, from my perspective, I feel that there's a lot of corruption going on in PSC. You think so? Yes. 
I totally because think so. the first list had 477 names, then a new one added 108 to make 585. What is? I think there are a bit more people who are deserving to be pre-qualified than the normal faces that we see. How they find themselves there every day, every other time they advertise for position is a question. <laughs> so we need to find out what is going on in in in, in PSC. Well, I, I, luckily, the parliament will have an opportunity to look at the names uh, at some stage. I'm totally yeah. dissatisfied. Oh, okay, we're out of time. Honorable Elachi, your final word. No, for yes. me, I think uh, it's not PSC. I think people have applied. You have given your documents. Many people lose out of government uh, uh, applications because of just few things. You've refused to go and finish with your carry, and you find yourself being thrown out, by the way. Those small, small things that we ignore is what you find many. That when you are doing now, you are long listing, and then you come and shoot list. You'll find many. <laughs> the, the, the list, we, are, we are only looking for 50 people. And by the way, I, I, as I say, if we were running government the way, without politicizing civil servants, do you know you're not supposed to be bringing applications of permanent secretaries? You look at the grade, the way they have moved. But because we politicized civil servants and, and the service itself, we distorted it. For the last, I think, 20 years now, we've mm. distorted it completely. But there were days you knew when I am at this job group as a director, the next level I will move is yes. to be their Another peers. Mm. Yeah. But we distorted ourselves. And that is why we are finding ourselves. Uh, and, and, and that's why when you look at that list and you see a lot of politicians, um, and I think a few commissioners here and there, what is the, what is the role of lobbying in these government jobs? Well, it's very high. By the way, I won't lie. Oh, there are those who are being eaten wherever they are being eaten. That's up to them. <laughs> there are those who uh, find you, they know you, they know your work. There's a lot of lobbying. I'm not refusing the lobby. That's why I'm saying we ourselves as Kenyans are to blame, even in what we are going through with all these uh, civil servants and all that. And, they have, and then every Kenyan thinks you have to work for, if you work for five years, and leave. You see the way, look at governors who have worked for 10 years, and look of governors, a county where five years you're just removing. There's no development okay. you'll ever find because nobody will be responsible. You just know I'm here for five years, I pick what I want, I steal, I loot, and then I'll leave after five years. It's okay. wrong. I, so I hear you we have to logic. also look at growth. I wish you had more time to go at it because you realize that uh, out of the 9,000, there are several Kenyans who are disappointed that they are not shortlisted. That's what I was asking the question about uh, the place of lobbying. Uh, there are instances where sometimes you'll be asked, please place no, no, your but appointment. It's also, it's also their papers. And, and some of the papers also, uh, you know, in PSC, by the way, you have to go certify your education papers thoroughly, okay. by the way. And I think, uh, I'm not saying many of them will have that problem, but I know this thing of care, and this, uh, because you find yourself being tabulated, even years you had forgotten. And many Kenyans like opening companies, and they forget about it. And then at one point, you've not been you have no clearance. Re doing okay. returns. So some of those things. Oh, oh, all right. Be. Eric Gumbi from ESCC, Honorable Beatrice Elachi from Dagoretti North, Nelson Quach from Belgut, and Diana Gishengo from Amnesty International. Thank you all for making time for us. And this conversation continues. Parliament has until... Um, the Vete Committee has until 20th of October to report back to the House, and the House has up to 3rd of November uh, to really file uh, and make a determination on the fate of those cabinet nominees before they can be formally appointed by the President. My name is Sam Gituku. See you some other time.